Drawing a lion is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey, hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So this video is going to be a little bit different than my usual tutorials because I've decided to break it down in two parts. And the reason for that is I just want to go a little bit more in depth into not just how I do things, but also why I do things to hopefully help you kind of apply the techniques that I show you in just pretty much any illustrations that you do. So this first part here is going to be about the sketching process and just kind of what goes into my brain when I create a character and when I sketch a character and then maybe a few tips to help you create your own characters as well. And the second part, which is going to come out on Saturday, so just in a few days, you won't have to wait too long, it's going to be about coloring and also the basics of shading. And I'm going to be drawing in Procreate, which is an app on the iPad, but seriously, especially for the sketching part, you can follow along with any drawing tool, even pencil and paper, will totally work for this. But for now, enough talking, let's start drawing. So in this case, I'm just going to start real quick by changing my background color. Well, <laughs> showing you which background color I used, but honestly, this is really not part of the sketch. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. And I recently got a question in which the person was asking me, how do I know where to draw the different shapes for my illustration sketches and I thought in this video might as well kind of show you how I think about that by reverse engineering this lion illustration. So I'm gonna keep it in the back, keep the example in the back, just lower the opacity and then we're all going to create a new layer for the sketch. So if you're working on paper obviously you're not creating a new layer, you're just going to draw really really light with your pencil at this stage. If you are creating a new layer though and working digitally, go ahead and set your layer to multiply since we're drawing on a darker background and you can pick whichever color you want to sketch with. I like to go with gray. Now in terms of brushes, for the sketch here really doesn't matter much. If you have Procreate, you can go into the sketching panel and pick the HP pencil. I really like it. Otherwise, I'm personally going to be using the sketching pencil from my illustration bundle. And it is obviously not essential for this video because we're just sketching, but if you want to check it out, it will be linked in the description below along with a special promo code just for the YouTube people as usual. I personally like to start my sketch with the most simple basic shapes possible. And I like to think of this step as really similar to if you were to actually create your lion out of Play-Doh. Because you would start with just very simple balls of clay that you would probably roll in your hands and then connect together. And the more time you spend on it, the more you would go from just, you know, spherical balls to actually refining the shape by pinching, pushing the clay around and just moving it around and getting more and more of our lion shape. So kind of keep that in mind when you're building your structure here. We don't really want to draw a lion first, we just want to draw the general structure of what is later going to become a lion. I really like to start my sketches by just drawing a really loose oval or circle for the head. It really doesn't need to be precise as you can see. And then I like going in and adding kind of a like a spine, I guess, just to show the general movement and position that the character is going to be in. And this line is also really great to help you plan out the proportions of your character. So you can see here I'm going with one head fitting twice in the body, so the proportion one, two. That being said, you can use any other proportion of your choice to create a taller or shorter lion. Once that is done, you're just going to split your line in four sections and draw an oval over the top three for the body. And in the bottom fourth, <laughs> you're gonna go and draw two little ovals for the legs. For the feet, I like to draw just rounded triangles, I guess, or rounded rectangles. One is going to be longer and one is going to be shorter just because of the orientation of the feet. And I also like to just draw little circles where the shoulders are going to be just to know where the arms are going to connect. And then for the arms, I honestly draw kind of um, S-curves is the best way <laughs> to describe it. As you can see here, it's kind of just like an S-shape and then I draw a little blob <laughs> to connect the S shape and create the hands. So really here at this stage, you don't want to be too precise. You just want to sketch the general shapes, like I was saying, the general form and especially the general movement. So here for the arms, you can see 
I just kind of sketched roughly where I wanted them to be and also went ahead and just added the tail real quick. Now one thing that is really important when you're drawing characters is knowing where the middle line is, especially for the body and the head. So I like to just go ahead and sketch that real quick, something you know like this, nothing complicated. And from there it's going to be way easier to go ahead and just kind of map out your facial features. You can also draw just a guide for the eyes, making sure that they are both aligned. And just kind of add nose, a mouth, depending on the type of character you're drawing. Here I'm just drawing a proud little lion, so the eyes are kind of closed and just contempt, so they look like little U's. And I like to always have fairly big nose and just cute little mouths like this. And I also really like adding eyebrows, even though it's an animal. It just gives so much more personality and life to your character. And at this point, you can go in and start refining your shapes a little bit. So think about pushing and pinching your clay like I was telling you earlier. So the shape of the head here, I want to have a little bit more of an S-curve as opposed to just a C-curve. And then I want to start adding the mane, which is going to be just so flowy. And I kind of like to think of it as a heart shape, honestly, around the face. And here, we really want to make sure that everything we draw at this stage flows and has really great curves. It is not the time to go in and add a bunch of million little details that are kind of not coherent. Just go ahead and draw the big shapes and make sure that they are flowing into each other really well like this. So for example, for the mane, I'm thinking of the hair starting from the face and then almost being pushed back by the wind or something like that. So there's a lot of movement as you can see here. And I'm gonna take this idea of movement and really bring it in the cape. So I'm just creating these S curves that are coming from the shoulders and falling down to the ground. A really nice flowing motion, I guess. So something like this, it is really, really soft. So take your time here to map out all the elements you want without getting into details. But like, for example, here, I want him to hold a stick. I want him to have a little crown at the top. I want him to have ears as well that I forgot. But we're not at the details yet. Think of it, to go back to the Play-Doh analogy, think of it of going as far as you can with your fingers with the clay. You cannot get into all the details, but you can for sure map out all the big shapes. And the next step is going to be all about cleaning the sketch and refining the details. So pretty much like bringing a toothpick or a precision tool to fix our Play-Doh sculpture. Now you can totally start adding colors with just a rough sketch like this. But if you're a little bit more new to illustration or art in general, I highly recommend you take the time to clean up your sketch a little bit more, especially if it's a character that you're creating yourself and you're not following a tutorial, because you're going to save so much time by knowing what you actually want to color. So for that, you can either lower the opacity of your base sketch if you're drawing an illustration software or a digital software, I should say, and then create a new sketch above that, uh, setting it to multiply as well. Or if you're drawing with pencil and paper, you're just going to start pressing harder on your pencil. So it's not going to be light strokes anymore. It's going to be, you know, reasonable, normal strokes. And all you're doing here is you're going back and you're selecting which lines and which shapes are going to be the one that you actually want to use. I personally like to start with the facial features, which I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I, that's what I like. <laughs> so you're just going over either, like I was saying, pressing harder on your pencil or just you know, drawing on your new layer that is full opacity. And your goal here is to draw each section in just one line. So each curve, whatever there is like, you know, either like the side of the face or the ear or a part of the mane, you're trying to draw each section, yeah, in one curve because you want to have the smoothest movement possible. It is okay if it is not perfect. We're not adding the color yet. And especially, I mean, even when you are adding the color, it's not going to be perfect either. But I highly encourage you to maybe sacrifice a little bit of perfection in order to get more movement. Because if you try and have the most perfect lines, you have a lot of, you, I mean, you risk your illustrations looking really, really, really stiff. And that's not a good look. <laughs> Another really helpful trick when you're trying to build movement is to try to avoid having parallel lines. So for the legs here, for example, you can see instead of drawing like two little straight vertical lines here, I'm drawing one that is slightly angled and that is going to give again more movement in your piece. So try to do that when you can avoid having parallel lines. And 
and yeah again just be loose draw the longest lines as you can and just get as much movement as you can in your illustration and i mean if you're uh, if you're new to the channel you've probably i mean if you're new to the channel obviously you've never heard me say it because <laughs> you're new to the channel but here on the channel i really like to say try to find your line don't force your line go over and if you don't like what you just did undo and start over again it is going to be much quicker and much more effective than drawing erasing a little section drawing erasing drawing erasing and going back and forth just draw the whole line and if you don't like it undo if you do like it move on to the next one and it is time for everyone's favorite the secret password so if you've watched this part in the video please go ahead and comment sketch if you're new here, it might seem a little bit strange, but we've been doing this for a few months now and seriously, it is just really, really cool. It gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me to create, you know, better tutorials for you guys. But it's also cool because it allows us to see who's part of the community and it's also really, really cool for me because you guys know me, you know, you hear, you, you hear my voice, you see my face, but I don't know you and whenever you leave a comment, I get to see sometimes your names and sometimes even your face and it's just, again, really great to see the wonderful creative community that we're building here on the channel. So just leave a comment saying sketch and then we're going to keep going. And one really helpful tip when you're trying to find your line is to flip either your sketch or your canvas around depending on the app you're using. So in Procreate, I just like to go ahead and select both my sketch and my clean sketch layer and then using the arrow tool, clicking flip horizontal here. And this just gives you a fresh look on everything and you can really quickly see what's not quite right. So when you're trying to find your lines, make sure that you flip your sketch back and forth while well, you can if you're drawing with pencil and paper. but. You can look in the mirror, honestly, you can just hold your piece of paper in front of the mirror and that's going to do it. But um, yeah, flip your sketch, flip your canvas and kind of see what's wrong, fix it, flip it again, see if it works better and just kind of go back and forth doing those two things for your entire sketch until you're happy with the result. And the amount of time you want to spend here refining everything really depends on a few things like your skill level as well as just how used you are to drawing a character so if it's the first time you draw a specific character or if you're creating it it's important that you spend some time you know just kind of cleaning up everything and figuring out what you want your character to be like but if you're following for example a tutorial you can go and just roughly map out where everything's going to be because the person is usually if, if they're a good teacher going to show you how to refine everything while drawing the color as well so use your judgment here to see how far you need to push your details in the sketch and we're going to see each other in a few days and i'm going to show you how to add the color and teach you about the basics of shading so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when this video comes out and in the meantime, if you want to draw more animals, you can just click on the link right here, which is going to bring you to a playlist in which I'm going to teach you how to draw a bunch more cute animals. So again, just click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.